Good day everyone. Once again, this is Sir Jonas Bertolome and I will be guiding you for today's lesson in our subject, Human Anatomy and Physiology. How are you today? I hope that you are doing good and in a state of focus in studying our lesson. So we will be talking about the basic chemistry of life. So question, tanong sir, bakit po namin kailangan pang pag-aralan ng chemistry in understanding um, human anatomy and physiology? So madali lamang ang sagot dyan, it is because our entire body is made up of chemicals, thousands of them which are continuously interacting with one another in an incredible phase. Okay? And then those um, chemical reactions underlie all the basic body processes such as movement, digestion, pumping of the heart, as well as um, having your thoughts. Okay? So let us proceed to the next slide. Okay, so slide. Um, we present to you the topics that will cover, that will be covered in this lesson. Okay, so number one is the concept of matter and energy. Next is molecules and compounds, and last is biochemistry. So these are the objectives that you need to achieve after finishing this lesson. Number one is to differentiate matter and energy. Next one is to define molecule and explain how molecules are related to compounds. And last is to distinguish organic and inorganic compounds. Okay? So if you're now ready, class, um, please take down notes and make sure that you are focused for today. So let's start. Next slide. So in this chapter, class, we present the basics of chemistry and biochemistry, which provides us background that we will need to know um, or we need to understand body functions. Next slide. Let's proceed right away to basic chemistry concepts. This portion of our lesson will be a bit of a review since napag-aralan nyo na rin naman ito sa inyong general biology course. Next slide. Okay, so let's um, start with um, discussing what is matter. So matter class is a stuff or is the stuff of the universe. Okay? With some exceptions, it can be seen smelled, and felt. More precisely, matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Meron tayong tinatawag na weight class kung saan yung weight, it is a measure of gravity pulling on a mass. So magkaiba yung mass at weight. And in this subject class, chemistry subject uh, studies the nature of matter, how its building blocks are put together, and how they interact. Matter exists in solid, liquid, and gaseous states, all of which are found in the human body. So first up, solids, such as bones and teeth, have a definite shape and volume. Liquids have a definite volume, but they conform to the shape of the container. Okay? Examples of body liquids are blood plasma and the interstitial fluid that bathes all body cells. Gases, on the other hand, have neither a definite shape nor a definite volume. The air we breathe is an example of gases. Additional information lang class that matter can change either physically or chemically. Kapag ang change of matter ay physical change, nagkaroon lamang ng modification sa kanyang shape and size at hindi na alter ang basic nature or substance. For example, the melting of ice or cutting food. Since yung ice is, is a form of um, water pa din naman siya, walang nabago doon, okay? Or cutting food. Chemical changes, on the other hand, do alter the composition of the substance often substantially. Example is the fermentation to make wine as well as digestion of food, okay? So in contrast class to matter is what we call energy okay energy has no mass and does not take up space compared to matter it can be measured only by its effects on matter okay we commonly define energy as the ability to do work or to put matter into motion so kumbaga siya yung nagbibigay effect sa matter meron tayong dalawang uri or types ng energy we have the kinetic energy which is displayed in the constant movement of the tiniest particles of matter or atoms, as well as in larger objects such as bouncing ball. 
when energy naman or is inactive or stored, we call it potential energy. All forms of energy exhibits both kinetic and potential work capacities. For example, tayo, di ba? Um, we are on the state na natakbo tayo, um, naglalakad tayo, that is kinetic energy. And when we do our rest, that is what we call potential energy. Bukod sa potential at kinetic energy, meron din tayong iba't ibang forms of energy class. Like, number one, take note, chemical energy, mechanical energy, electrical energy, and radiant energy. So, pag sa chemical energy, example nito are the um, energy which is harvested from the food we eat during um, ayun, the food we eat. And then, yung electrical energy naman, it's is in the form of the nerve impulses. Na kung saan yung nerve impulses transmit messages from one the body to another. Okay? Next is mechanical. So, pag sinabing mechanical, just like um, when we use our muscles in our legs to contract or and or they pull on our bones, causing our limbs to move. And yung radiant energy naman class, which stimulates the retinas of our eyes, and it is important in vision. So, kailangan natin ng light para makakita. And UV waves cause sunburn, but they also stimulate our bodies to make vitamin D. Kaya ang baby ay pinapaarawan sa umaga kasi um, it helps our uh, skin to um, create vitamin D using the light energy. Okay? So, that's all about the concept of energy. Let us proceed to the next slide. All matter, na pagsapan natin kanina, is composed a limited number of substances called elements, which are unique substances that cannot be broken into simpler substances by ordinary chemical methods. Examples of elements include many commonly known substances such as oxygen, silver, gold, copper, and iron. So, for class, meron tayong 180 na elements na na-identify with certainty at ang bawat elements ay nakatabulate sa ating periodic table of elements. So, as you can see in this picture, 92 of those elements are naturally occurring while others are artificially created. Also, class, 4 of those elements are essential for life. So, ito yung CHON or CHON or the vital ele elements that make up 96% of our body weight. These are the carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Besides these four elements, several others are present in small or trace amount. Ibig sabihin, dapat minimal lang. Kasi kapag sumobra, maaari magkaroon ng um, um, defects or disease. For example, um, iodine must be on trace amounts or small amounts. If it uh, exceeds, nag-exceed siya or parang mas kulang pa, pwede tayong magkaroon ng hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. So, di ba, pag hyperthyroidism, pwede kang magkaroon ng goiter. Okay, let's proceed to the next slide. So, each element is composed of very similar particles or building blocks, which is what we call atoms. Because all elements are unique, the atoms of each element differ from those of all elements. So, pag may isang element, it is constituted to a unique atom. Oxygen atom or oxygen element, oxygen atom. Hydrogen element, hydrogen atom. Okay? We designate also each element by a one or two letter chemical shorthand, an atomic symbol. In most cases, the atomic symbol is simply the first or first two letters of the element's name. For example, yung sa carbon, C stands for carbon. O stands for oxygen. So, in this case, uh, PowerPoint, HE stands for helium. In few cases naman, class, the atomic symbol is taken from the Latin name for the element. For instance, NA, from the Latin word natrium, indicates sodium. NK, which comes from the Latin word calium, indicates potassium. Okay? And then, tong atom class, additional, comes from the Greek word atomos which means uncut or indivisible. Hindi yung invisible, ha? indivisible. Meaning, hindi kayang madivide pa into smaller units. We now know that atoms, although incredibly small, are clusters of even smaller components called subatomic particles. So, tawag sa kanila ay subatomic particles. 
Okay? Which includes protons, neutrons, and electrons. So, protons class have a positive charge, whereas neutrons are uncharged or neutral. Protons and neutrons are heavy particles and have approximately the same mass. Okay? The tiny electrons naman bear a negative charge, equal in strength to the positive charge of the protons, but their mass is so small that it usually designated as 0 amu. Okay? So, kung makita nyo dito sa structure ng atom, so itong um, red, the protons, and the yellow is the neutrons, forms the nucleus of the atom. So, once again, protons and neutrons forms the nucleus. And then, itong electron, nagkikrate siya ng tinatawag na orbit or electron cloud. Okay? Na ginagamit para makipag-interact with other atoms during sharing or, um, yun, pag nag-share or nag isa Okay? Next slide. When two or more atoms naman combine chemically, molecules are formed. If two or more atoms of the same element bond or become chemically linked together, molecule of that element is produced. For example, class here, when two hydrogen atoms bond, a molecule of hydrogen gas is formed. Hydrogen atom, H atom plus H atom will, will give us H2 molecule or hydrogen molecule. Okay? So, always remember that molecules with one type of atom are just called molecules. So, kapag halimbawa, O2, oxygen molecule. N2, hydrogen molecule. Okay? So, meron naman tayong compounds. So, when two or more different atoms bind together to form a molecule, the molecule is more specifically referred to to as a molecule of a compound. Example na nga ay yung C6H12O6 or what we call glucose. It is considered a compound class because it is a combination of 6 carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and 6 oxygen atoms, which is a result of a chemical reaction from photosynthesis in plants. Okay? So, yun. Exam another one is H2O. So, H2O is a compound which is water. Now, san it is a combination of um, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atoms. Okay, so all compounds found in the body fall into one of two major classes of molecules. It's either inorganic or organic compounds. The class of the compound is determined solely by the presence or absence of carbon. So, inorganic or organic siya kapag present or absent carbon. And with this, we'll proceed to the biochemistry part of our module. Next slide. Yan. Ano kaya ang pinagkaiba class ng basic chemistry sa biochemistry? Siyempre, class sa spelling, di ba? Dahil pag nakita na natin na may specific na bio sa root word, it, it already pertains to life. Therefore, class... Biochemistry is the study of chemical composition and reactions of living matter. As I have mentioned before, compounds of two basic types, which are essential in studying biochemistry, the inorganic and organic compound. Punta muna tayo class sa inorganic. Inorganic compounds lack carbon and tend to be small, simple molecules. Examples of inorganic compounds found in the body are water, salts, and many acids and bases. Okay? So, it doesn't contain carbon. For example, water. Walang C yun. Salt, for example, NaCl. Hindi yung C, C dun sa CL. CL kasi yun. So, it pertains to chlorine. So, wala siyang carbon. And then, as well as some acids and bases. Okay? On the other hand, organic compounds contain carbon. But, except for a few uh, exceptions, such as carbon dioxide, Yung carbon dioxide, meron siyang carbon and carbon monoxide. These two are inorganic. Pero meron silang carbon, exception lamang sila. Okay? The important organic compounds in the body are what we call carbohydrates, fats or lipids, proteins, and nucleic acid. All organic compounds are fairly or very large covalent molecules. So, commonly talaga malaki po itong mga organic compounds. 
So, inorganic and organic compounds are equally essential for life. Trying to determine which more is valuable than compared to trying to determine whether the ignition system or the engine is more essential to the operation of a car. So, kumbaga, parehas yung, ano, mahirap mo i-compare kung sino yung mas kailangan dyan kasi parehas po silang kailangan na kailangan. So, let us deeply understand the function of several inorganic compounds first. Next slide. So, una muna tayo sa water. Water is the most abundant inorganic compound in the body. It accounts for two for about two thirds of the body weight. Okay? Among the properties that make water so vital are the following. So we have high heat capacity, high heat of vaporization, polar solvent properties, reactivity, and cushioning. So isa isa natin yan class. First property of water is having a high heat capacity, wherein it absorbs and releases large amounts of heat before its temperature changes. Thus, it prevents the sudden change in body temperature that might otherwise result from intense sun exposure, chilling winter winds, or internal events such as vigorous muscle activity that liberate large amounts of heat. Okay? Next one, water has high heat of vaporization also. That is, vapor evaporation requires a large amount of heat, therefore becoming useful cooling mechanism. For example, perspiration resulted from intensive heat produced by vigorous activity or high temperature and then the evaporation of sweat allows our body to cool down, maintaining overall body temperature, thus having homeostasis. Okay, which is yung goal ng body, di ba? So, next slide, water is an excellent solvent because of its polarity. Indeed, ito nga yung tinatawag na universal solvent. Kapag sinabi natin solvent, class, di ba? Ito yung liquid na tumutunaw sa solute. And yung solute is the smaller part of the substance in the solution. So, mas onti dapat yung solute kesa sa solvent. Okay? Hindi po yung solvent na hinihit-hit. Okay? Small reactive chemicals such as salts, acids, and bases dissolves easily in water and become evenly distributed. Okay? Yung mga molecules niyan cannot react chemically unless they are in a solution. So, virtually class, all chemical reactions that occur in body depend on water solvent properties because nutrients Gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide and wastes can dissolve in water. And water can act as a transport and exchange medium in the body. For example, all these substances are carried around the body in blood plasma. So, yung liquid part ng blood that is mostly made up of water. Yung liquid, yung blood plasma. And are exchanged between the blood and body cells by passing through the water-based interstitial fluid that bathes cells. A specialized molecules that lubricate the body, such as mucus and synovial fluid, also use water as their solvent. Synovial fluid oils the end of the bones as they move within joint cavities. So yung synovial fluids, yun yung parang, ayun yung present sa mga joints natin. Parang yun nga yung parang nag, nagiging way para mas makagalaw yung ating bones. Okay, parang langis. Okay. Let me add just let me just add class the concept kung paano na dissolve yung solute. Okay? Paano na dissolve ang mga solute? So it is because of what we call the hydration shell or hydration layers na ang ginagawa ay ine-enclose ang bawat ions ng solute. As you can see in the picture, every hydration layers take in the ion of a molecule in salt for example until yung buong solution is equally distributed with hydration cell na may tig-iisang ion. So, tignan nyo, ganyan, di ba? Yung isang hydration cell or shell or hydration layer, kukuha siya ng isang ion ng sodium, yung isa naman kukuha ng Cl, then yung isa sodium ulit, Cl, hanggang sa ang mangyari, lahat ng hydration cell may tig-iisang um, ion ng solute, and then yan is madidistribute in every parts of the water. Kaya yung tubig, maalat na. Okay? Kasi nag-dissolve na or na-distribute na yung iba't ibang uh, yung mga ions ng solute. Okay, let's proceed to the next slide. Water is an important reactant then 
for some types of chemical reaction. To digest food or break down biological molecules, water molecules are added to the bonds of the larger molecules in order to break them. Such reactions are, are called hydrolysis reaction, a term that is specifically recognizes this rule of water. From the word hydro means water and lysis or lysis means breaking down or splitting. Okay? So, ang major goal niya, through the use of water, mabe-break down yung mga molecules. On the other hand, yun namang dehydration synthesis ay kabaligtaran po ng hy hydrolysis. Kung saan nakakapag-create naman ng new molecules through a release of water. Kaya dehydration. So, to summarize, hydrolysis, adding of water, broken, pro, uh, breaking down of molecules. Adding of water, breaking down of molecules. Dehydration synthesis, Releasing of water, creating or synthesizing new molecules. Yun yung kanilang difference. Water also serves as a protective function. For example, uh, cerebrospinal fluid, which water forms a cushion, cushion around the brain that helps to protect it from physical trauma. Kapag naman sa mother na buntis or pregnant, yung amniotic fluid which surround the developing fetus plays a vital role pag, sa pag-protect ng fetus. Kung baga, okay lang din na maplakda sa swimming pool kesa sa maplakda sa sebento. Although may surface tension din ng water, but still it cushions our body. Okay? ba diba? Kung wala ding amniotic fluid or water dun sa fetus, siguro nanuyot na din yung anak mo as well as Kumbaga, kapag ikaw ay gumagalaw-galaw, di ba, na, na-disturb na siya sa pagpapahinga o pagtulog ng baby. Kaya okay lang din, class, na tayo is mag-exercise or tayo ay mag, mag gumana ma kapag ikaw ay buntis. Kasi, um, pinaprotektahan naman siya or kinukusyon siya ng, um, ng, ano, na, ng water in the form of amniotic fluid. Okay, so that's it. Knowing these properties of water, we can conclude that water plays a major role in regulating the temperature of the body, protecting vital organs, and helping transfer essential nutrients in our body, and etc. Let's proceed to the next inorganic compound, which is salt. Okay, a salt naman is an ionic compound containing cations other than hydrogen ion and anions other than hydroxide Ayon. Kasi yung H na yan, tsaka yung OH, yan is um, related sa acid and bases. So, other than those, yun is a salt. Salts of many metal elements are commonly found in the body. But the most plentiful salts are those containing calcium and phosphorus, found chiefly in bones and teeth. Okay? So, yun. Yung mga salt na yan, basically found yan sa bones and teeth, tsaka din sa ngipin natin. Yun nga, kaya di ba parang merong toothpaste na active salt. <laughs> okay? Salts, both in their ionic forms and in combination with other elements, are vital to body functioning. For example, so sodium and potassium ions are essential for nerve impulses. Late sa nervous system, ang pag-discuss pa natin yan. And ions form part of the hemoglobin molecule that transports oxygen within red blood cells. Because ions are charged particles, all salts are electrolytes, which are substances that conduct an electrical current in the solution. So, mahalaga ang salts para din uh, mag-function yung mga nerve cells natin kasi it is an electrolyte. Okay? It, uh, it distributed or distributes electricity or electrical current. Okay? Therefore, when electrolyte balance is severely disturbed or parang um, bumaba yung level ng salt ng katawan, virtually nothing in the body works. For example, if nagkaroon ng deficiency sa amount of calcium needed in the body, maaring magkaroon ka kas ng tinatawag na hypocalcemia or hypercalcemia if sobra ka naman sa calcium. And these diseases can affect body functions. Okay? For example then, nagkaroon ka ng uh, yun nga, nagkaroon ka ng defect sa amount of sodium and um, potassium. So, ang mangyayari dyan, class, magkakaroon ka din ng tinatawag na disease na kung saan maapekto sa nervous system since yun nga is electrolytes. Okay? So, hyperchloremia naman or 
hypochloremia naman once na nagkaroon ng excess or deficiency of chlorine ions respectively. Okay? Yung kidney po yung um, gumagawa po ng in maintaining the proper balance of electrolytes. Once na kulang, once na sobra, may mangyayaring something sa ating body. May, therefore, creating an imbalance in our homeostasis. Okay, so like salts, acid and bases are electrolytes. Okay, that is they ionize, dissociate in water, and then can conduct, conduct an electrical current as well. Parang katulad din ng salt. Pero may pinagkaiba siya, class. Acids, eto, acids, ano yung sa tingin yung commonly um, lasa ng acid? Siyempre, acid have a sour taste and can dissolve many metals or burn a hole in your rug. Okay? Acids can have a devastating effect. For example, consider the damage to sea life, trees, and famous historical monuments caused by the vinegar-like acid rain. But the most useful definition of an acid is that it is a substance that can release hydrogen ions. Okay? Indetectable amounts. Because a hydrogen ion is a hydrogen nucleus or a naked proton, acids are also defined as proton donors. You may find it useful to think of acids as putting protons in the game. As free protons, hydrogen ions can influence the acidity of body fluids. Okay? Acids found or produced in the body include acetic acid, the acid component of vinegar, and carbonic acid. Bases naman have a bitter taste, feel slippery, and are proton acceptors. You also think of them as taking protons out of the game. When protons are bound to a molecule, they are unable to affect the acidity of body fluids. Hydroxide are common inorganic bases. Like acids, the hydroxides ionize and dissociate in water, but in this case, the hydroxide ion and some cations are released. <clears throat> the hydroxide ion, or OH, is an avid proton seeker, and any base containing this ion is considered a strong base. By contrast class, um, bicarbonate ion, which is an important base in the blood, is fairly a weak, weaker base. So, commonly class, ang mas kailangan ng katawan natin is yung weaker base. Okay? Compared sa mga strong base such as ammonia. ba? Kapag tayo is nakalanghap ng ammonia dun sa mga pelikula, sa mga palabas sa Channel 7 na para may panyo, tas bihidang nahamat, hihimatay. That is, or yung panyong yun, meron yung ammonia, which is a strong base na harmful sa ating katawan. Kaya nga, fairly weak base lang ang kailangan ng, ng body natin, which is yung blood. Okay? So, the relative concentration of hydrogen and hydroxide ion is in fluid is measured in concentration units called pH units. Okay? Meron tayong tinatawag na pH scales, which run from 0 to 14. Yan, please refer to the figure. And each successive change of one pH unit represents to a tenfold change in hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, so once na tumas ang pH, naging um, tenfold yung change ng hydrogen ion concentration, yung dami ng hydrogen. So at a pH of 7, the number of hydrogen ions exactly equals the number of hydroxide ion. Kasi pinagaano natin dito, pinagbabalance natin yung hydrogen at hydroxide, yung H at OH. Pag balance lamang po yun, um, the solution is what we call neutral. Okay? For example, blood and water na iniinom natin. It's either acidic or basic pag neutral. Solution naman with the pH lower than 7 are acidic. 0 to 6.6.99. Okay? So, kumbaga, yan po ay merong mataas na concentration ng hydrogen over OH or hydroxide. Okay? Solutions with the pH number higher than 7 are basic or alkaline. 7.01 to 14. Which is, uh, mas madami po yung hydroxide ion compared to hydrogen. Okay? So, ito po yung mga examples class ng mga solutions or ng mga um, pagkain na merong or na, na acidic 
basic or neutral. Let's proceed to the organic compounds na. So once again, uh, uh, the following inorganic molecules are water, salts, and oxygen. So dito na tayo sa organic compounds. Most organic compounds are very large molecules. So nasabi ko nga ulit. And contains carbon. Except for some examples like CO2, carbon dioxide, and carbon oxide or monoxide, which are inorganic. There are four major organic molecules, namely carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acid. Next slide. So, yung mga organic compounds class, like, such as carbohydrates and proteins, for example, are what we call polymers. So, pag sinabing polymer, these are chain-like molecules made of many similar or repeating units called monomers, which are joined or synthesized by dehydration synthesis. So, nasabi ko din siya kanina. And then, um, when polymers naman must be broken down or digested to their monomers, the reverse process called hydrolysis occurs. So, next, pag-aralan natin siya ng mas deeper. Ganito ang nangyayari pag dehydration synthesis. So, please refer to the letter A. Ayan. Para mag-link sila together. So, sorry but Bawat monomers, yan, ito yung mga monomers. So, yun yung mismong unit. Repeating units para makapag-create ng polymer. Ang goal kasi ni dehydration synthesis is makapag-create ng polymer from monomer. Okay? Bawat monomer class ay ma mayroong OH or hydroxide, or hydroxyl group sa dulo. Para mag-link sila together, yung H ion ng isang monomer ay mare-remove. Okay? And then yung OH naman, or HO, yung mare-remove sa isa pang monomer. So dito, H, on the other monomer, OH. And then mag-link na ang dalawang monomer through covalent band. So ang matitira na lamang po dyang band, O. Okay? And then, yun na po yung magiging dahilan para magban sila. Tapos, yung H and OH na nirelease ay magbaban din to produce water. Kaya tinawag class na dehydration synthesis. Kumbaga, to create larger polymers from monomers, water must be released or created. Okay? So, para lamang yung para ikaw is mas mabuo birang tao, kailangan may matanggal din sa'yo. Okay? In contrast naman, hydrolysis, yung water, mole, yung water molecule, yung ia-add sa polymer para siya ay mag-breakdown. Okay? So, kaya tinawag siyang hydrolysis from the word hydro means water and lysis or lysis means breakdown. Kasi monomers will be released with the addition of water. Kabaligtaran lang siya ng dehydration synthesis. Okay? Parang ito naman yung magkasama na talagang masaya na kayo sa isa't isa, pero may isang umentra at napaghiwalay kayo. Mm -hmm. Di ba masakit yun? Okay? So, to make it um, easier, dehydration synthesis from monomer to polymer through release of water. Hydrolysis naman from polymer broken down into monomer with the addition of water. So, please refer to the example para mas maunawaan nyo siya. So, sabi ko nga, magkabaligtad lamang silang process. And all organic molecules which are covered in this chapter are formed by dehydration synthesis and broken down by hydrolysis. Okay? So, nagigits na ba? Let's proceed to the, in the, let's proceed to the organic compounds. I hope, class, nasusundan nyo pa ako. So, thank you kasi nandito na kayo sa part na to. So, first one, first organic compound or molecules or biomolecules is carbohydrates, which includes sugar and starches. Contains carbon, hydrogen, as well as oxygen. With slight variation, the hydrogen and oxygen atoms appear in the same ratio as in water. That is, Two hydrogen atoms to one oxygen atoms. So for every single carbon atom, there are two oxygen, or hydrogen rather, and one oxygen. So two is to one, or one is to two is to one. Okay? This is reflected in the word carbohydrate. Kasi nga, which means hydrated carbon. 
and in molecules of sugar, for example, glucose is C6H12 and ribose is C5H10O5. So C6H12, yun is 1 is 2 is to 1 ratio. Kasi um, 1 refers to 6, 2 refers to 12, and 6 refers to 1. Since, di ba, 2 times 6 is equals to 12. Okay? Sana na gets nyo. Okay? Carbohydrates class are classified according to size and solubility in water. These are the monosaccharides, disaccharide, and polysaccharide. Nagkaroon lang ng prefix, mono, di, and poly. Then yung saccharide, it means sugar. It's either one sugar, two sugar, and many sugar. Let us deeply understand these three types of sugars of carbohydrates. So first up is the monosaccharide. Once again, which means mono, sugar, are mono, one, and sugar means saccharide. And the saccharides, monosaccharides, are referred to as simple sugars. They are single chain of or single ring structure, meaning the carbon backbone forms either a line or a circle. So ito siya. It's either a line, paline, or circle. Ganyan po yung itsura ng mga monosaccharide. The most important monosaccharides in the body are what we call glucose, fructose, galactose, ribose, and deoxyribose. So, yung glucose, ito po, also called as blood sugar, is the universal cellular, cellular fluid. So, yan po yung mismo nilalagay natin or kailangan ng ating katawan para mag-function ang mag-function tayo. Ganyan. So, kumbaga, yung glucose, yan yung present sa dextrose. Okay? Yung tinasaksak sa ating um, kapag tayo ay may sakit, ganyan. So, kasi, um, yun yung pinakailangan ng katawan natin. Yung fructose naman, or fruit sugar, and galactose, which is also called as milk sugar, are converted to glucose for use by body cells. So, kumbaga, class, for example, kumain ka ng prutas na may fructose, syempre, through digestion, i-convert na yan into glucose. Kasi yun yung kailangan ng cells natin. Kailangan glucose yung form para ma-absorb niya yung nutrients. And then yung galactose naman in milk, ganun din po, iinumin, then through processing, through metabolism, ma-convert din siya into glucose. Ito namang ribose and deoxyribose form part of the structure of nucleic acid. Later on, madidiscuss natin yung dalawang yan, deoxyribose and which are another group of inorganic molecules. Commonly class, mapapansin nyo, kapag siya ay sugar, Meron dapat siyang OSE sa dulo. Glucose, fructose, galactose, deoxyribose, ribose, tapos pag naiinis ka na, kutose mo siya. <laughs> Joke lang, kutose. <laughs> Joke lang. Okay, so let's proceed with the disaccharides. Disaccharides class or double sugar, from the word di, means double or two, double sugar, are formed when two simple sugars are joined by what process? Dehydration synthesis. In this reaction, which are noted earlier, a water molecule is lost and the bond forms. So, ito yun, no? Diba, ito yung dalawang monomer and then, nag-release yung isa ng H, yung isa is OH, naging water yon, and then, ito na lang yung natirang bond. Okay? So, nabuo sila. Okay? Some of the most important disaccharides in the diet are sucrose, which are formed with the dehydration synthesis or from the dehydration synthesis of glucose and fructose. Glucose plus fructose is sucrose. Okay? Next one, um, oh wait lang, yung sucrose pala tinatawag siyang table sugar or cane sugar. Yung matatagpuan sa mga asukal natin sa bahay. And then, next one is the lactose, which is formed from the dehydration synthesis of galactose and glucose. Gla galactose plus glucose is called lactose, which is found in milk. And maltose naman, glucose plus glucose is equal to maltose, which is called malt sugar. Because of, or because the double sugar or, or these disaccharides are too large to pass through cell membrane, they must be broken down or digested to their monosaccharide units to be absorbed from the digestive tract in the blood. And this is accomplished by, para ma-broken down sila, hydrolysis. 
addition of water, and then, mababroken down siya into smaller particles. Okay? So, long branching chains of linked simple sugars are called polysaccharide. Literally, many sugars. Because they are large, insoluble molecules, they are ideal storage compounds or products. Another consequence of their large size is that they lack the sweetness of simple and double sugars. So, commonly, wala silang masyadong tamis. Okay? Only two polysaccharides, which are starch and glycogen, are of major importance into the body. Starch is the storage polysaccharide formed by plants. Diba? We ingest it in the form of starchy foods, such as grains, corn, rice, root, yung mga kamote, diba? potatoes and carrots, for example. So, yun yung tinatake natin. Naman, on the other hand, is a slightly smaller but similar polysaccharide found in animal tissues, which are largely in the muscle and liver. Like starch, it is a polymer of linked glucose units. So, yan yun, no? Polymer, nag-link na nag-link na nag-link through dehydration synthesis, and then nakapag-create ng polysaccharide. Okay, so ang carbohydrates ang pinaka nagiging ready and easily used source of fuel in our cells. And glucose is at the top of the menu. Once na nabroken down na ang glucose through cellular respiration, it will release water and carbon dioxide as well as the energy in the form of ATP. Okay, yung ATP na yun, yung nagiging energy na kailangan ng katawan natin. So once again, we have um, mono, di, and polysaccharides. Examples of carbohydrates. Let's proceed class to lipids or fats. These are large and diverse group of organic compounds and they enter the body in the form of meat, egg yolks, dairy products, and oils. The most abundant lipids in the body are triglycerides, phospholipids, and steroids. Additional na lang class yung, um, sorry class kung meron ditong ano, um, please disregard na lang this one. Okay? Like carbohydrates, all lipids contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But in lipids, carbon and hydrogen atoms are far out now outnumber oxygen out atoms, as illustrated by the formula for a typical fat name, tristiarin, which is C57H110O6. So in outnumber ng carbon and hydrogen yung oxygen. Okay? So kung baga walang definite ratio ang carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen sa lipids. Compared sa carbohydrates na may 1 is to 2 is to 1 na ratio. Lipids are insoluble in water but readily dissolve in other fluids and in organic solvents such as alcohol and acetone. So let us differentiate the following types of lipids. Okay? So itong tatlo. Number 1 is triglyceride. Triglyceride. Bakit kaya yun? Dito sa triglycerides, um, or neutral fats are composed of two types of building blocks. So, the fatty acids and glycerol. Their synthesis involves the attachment of three fatty acids to a single glycerol molecule. So, merong attachment din. Okay? Dito sa, dito sa triglyceride class, meron tayong dalawang uri based on the number of covalent bonds of the fatty acids. We have the um, saturated and unsaturated fat. Commonly, saturated na tatagpuan sa mga animal fats, unsaturated naman na tatagpuan sa mga plant. Saturated fats has fatty acids, contains, or does, has fatty acid chains that are straight, and kapag room temperature, the molecules of a saturated fat pack closely together, forming a solid butter, for example. Mayroon lamang isang single covalent bonds between carbon atoms. Yun namang unsaturated fats, on the other hand, is may either isa or dalawa na double covalent bonds. Pag isa, monosaturated. Pag dalawa or more, polyunsaturated. So, these double and triple bonds called, cause the fatty, fatty acid chains to kink so they cannot pack closely enough to solidify. Hence, triglycerides with short fatty acid chains or unsaturated fatty acids are oils, which are liquid at room temperature. Yung mga plant lipids naman are typically oils din. Example include olive oil, rich in monosaturated fats, and soybean and safflower oils, which contain a high percentage of polyunsaturated fatty acid. 
Longer fatty acid chains and more saturated fatty acids are common in animal fats, okay? such as butter fat and fats of meat, which are solid at room temperature. Of the two types of fatty acids, the unsaturated variety, especially the olive oil, is more heart healthy. So, mas healthy po ang unsaturated compared to saturated fats. Okay? Next one is phospholipid. The phospholipids are similar to triglyceride. The major difference lang is that a phosphorus-containing group is always part of the molecule and takes the place of one of the fatty acid chains. Thus, phospholipids have two instead of three attached fatty acid. So, dalawa naman po yung fatty acid ni phospholipid compared dun kay triglyceride na may tri tatlong fatty acids. Okay? Because the phosphorus-containing portion a negative charge, phospholipid has special chemical properties and polarity. For example, the charge region or yung phosphorus yung head, yung ulo, ito, is a hydrophilic or water-loving. It means attack, it attracts and interacts with waters and ion. The fatty acid tails naman are hydrophobic and do not interact with polar or charge molecules. So the cell presence of phospholipids in cell membrane allow cells to be selective about what they enter or what may enter or leave. So for example, eto, tung phospholipid molecule na yan class. Um, ano, yun nandun sa pinakagilid ha. Madami yan sa cell membrane, parang isa siyang layer. And then, ang ginagawa niyan class, nag attract niya ng water para makapasok sa um, cell. And then syempre, since yung hydro nilalabas din niya para nagkakaroon ng um, equal flow ng ng elements dun sa cells. Next one is steroids are basically flat molecules formed of four interlocking carbon rings. As you can see, thus their structure differs quite a bit from that of other lipids. So the the single most important steroid molecule is cholesterol. We ingest cholesterol in animal products such as meat, eggs, and cheese. And some is made by the liver regardless of dietary intake. Cholesterol has earned bad press because of its role in anteriosclerosis. Naging pangit ang perspective ng mga tao dito because of its role nga sa anteriosclerosis. But it is essential for human life. Cholesterol is um, found in cell membranes and is raw material used to make vitamin D. Yung namang steroid hormones and bile salts, kasama din yun doon. All those steroid hormones are present in the body in only small amounts, they are vital in homeostasis. For example, yung sex hormones na may um, steroids, reproduction would be impossible. And without the corticosteroids produced by the ad adrenal glands, the body would not survive. So those are the following kinds of lipids. We have the triglyceride, phospholipids, and steroids. So to add, di ba yung minsan yung steroid, ina-add din siya or ini-inject ng mga athletes para mas maging uh, malakas sila pag nakipagboxingan, ganyan. But basically, medyo harmful din siya sa katawan once na nasobrahan ang pag-intake. Okay, now let us proceed to the most functional organic compounds among the four, which is the proteins. Okay, proteins account for over 50% of the inorganic or organic matter in the body. And they have the most varied functions of all organic molecules. Some are construction material. Some are construction material. And other play vital roles in function. Like carbohydrates and lipids, all proteins contain carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. In addition, they contain nitrogen and sometimes sulfur and phosphorus atoms as well. The building blocks of proteins are small molecules called amino acids. Ito class ha, ang building block class ng carbohydrate is glucose. Ang building blocks ng lipids is fatty acids and glycerol. Okay? And then kay protein naman is amino acid. Okay? 20 varieties of amino acids are found in human proteins. Amino acids naman are joined together in chains to form polypeptides. Okay? Then, proteins and large complex proteins. Because each type of amino acid has distinct properties, 
the sequence in which they are bound together produces proteins that vary widely both in structure and function. Proteins can be described in terms of structures. Number one, the sequence of amino acid composing each amino acid chain is called the primary structure. This structure, which resembles a strand of amino acid beans, beads, is the backbone of a protein molecule in which the chemical properties of each amino acid will affect how the protein folds. Most proteins do not function as simple linear chains of amino acid. Next slide. Instead, they twist or bend upon themselves to form a more complex secondary structure. The most common secondary structure is the alpha helix, which resembles a metal spring. And then the other is the B helix. So many proteins have tertiary structure, which is next to higher level of complexity. Tertiary structures is achieved when, when alpha helical or beta pleated regions of the amino acid chain fold upon one another to produce a compact ball-like or globular protein. And finally, when two or more amino acid chains combine in a regular manner to form a complex protein, the protein has quaternary structure. So primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Okay, next. Mas mag-focus tayo dito. Based on their overall shape and structure, proteins are classified as either fibrous or globular protein. So fibrous, um, the structural uh, protein or strand-like fibrous protein are appear most often in body structures. Some exhibit only secondary structure but most have tertiary or even quaternary structure. They are very important in binding structures together and providing strength for certain body tissues. For example, class collagen is found in bones. Cartilage and tendons is the most abundant protein in the body. Keratin is the structural protein for hair and nails and the material that makes skin tough. Kaya kung makita mo di ba class yung tingnan mo yung nails mo. Parang ano siya, strand or parang nakalinya kasi fibrous siya as well as the keratin. Next one, the globular proteins are mobile or gumagalaw and generally compact. Spherical molecules that that have at least tertiary structure. Okay? And these water-soluble proteins play crucial role in virtually and all biological process. Because they do things rather than just to form molecules, they are also called functional proteins. The scope of their activities is remarkable. For example, some proteins called antibodies help to provide immunity. Others, like hormones, help to regulate growth and development. Still others, called enzymes, regulate essentially every chemical reaction that goes on within the body. The oxygen-carrying protein, called hemoglobin, is an example of globular protein with quaternary structure. So basically, globular, from the word globe, they are spherical in shape, mostly are mobile. For example, hemoglobin, hemo means blood and globin means globular protein. So it carries oxygen. Diba? Siya yung nagtatransport na oxygen. Meron din tayo tawag na enzyme. So, pahapyo lang sa enzyme plus, these are globular proteins that acts as biological catalysts. Pag sinabing catalyst, it is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction through without becoming part of the product or being changed itself. The following are the characteristics of enzymes. So, kindly read them for additional information. So, this one, of the, this one class is the mechanism of enzyme action. We can reserve the discussion about this on our online meeting. So, ganyan po yung nangyayari sa enzyme action. Lastly, let's proceed to the nucleic acid. And we will be ending. The role of the nucleic acid is fundamental. They make up your genes, which provide the basic blueprint of life. They do not only what type of organism you would be, but also directed your growth and development. And they did this largely by dictating protein structure. So, ito talaga yung parang nagko-control sa ating katawan as well as siya yung nagiging blueprint ng nagpapakita ng design natin. Kaya ka din um, mapango o kaya ka din matangkad, kaya ka maitin, kaya ka ganyan attitude because it is dictated in the nucleic acid, specifically sa DNA mo. Okay? So, nucleic acid, composed din siya ng carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and phosphorus atoms which are the largest biological molecules in the body. So, yun nga, nucleic acid is the largest among the four. 
their building blocks, which are nucleotides, are quite complex as well. Each consists of three basic parts. Number one, a nitrogen-containing base or nitrogenous base, a pentose or five-containing five-carbon sugar, and a phosphate group. So, meron na siyang nitrogenous base. May sugar na siya. Yung, it's either deoxyribose or ribose and a phosphate group. There are two major kinds of nucleic acid which are deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, and ribonucleic acid which is RNA. DNA and RNA differs in many respects. Okay? So, sa word pa lang, sa mismong spelling pa lang, doon na natin malalaman kung anong klaseng sugar yung meron siya. Okay? So, let's proceed to the ano, next slide. This is a diagram showing the difference of DNA and RNA. So, let's proceed with the first. DNA. DNA is the genetic material found within the cell nucleus, which is the control center of the cell. It has two fundamental roles. It repeats itself exactly before a cell can divide, thus ensuring that everybody get, gets an in turn identical copy of the genetic information. And number two, it provides the instructions for building every protein in the body. So once again, nagre-replicate pag nagdi-divide yung cell, and then nagda-direct, nagbibigay ng instruction for creating protein. So DNA is a long double chain of nucleotides. So basically, ang structure niya is helical or double helix. It, its bases are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. And its sugar is deoxyribose. Kaya nga, deoxyribonucleic acid. Ano yung deoxyribose class? Anong klaseng um, biological or organic compound yan? It is a carbohydrate. And anong klaseng carbohydrate? Monosaccharide. Okay? Binding between bases is very specific. A always binds with T and G always binds to C. Thus, A and T are said to be complementary bases as are C and G. Okay? For the most part naman, RNA functions outside the nucleus and can be considered the molecular assistant of DNA. That is, RNA carries out the orders for protein synthesis issued by DNA. So, kung si DNA nagsasabi ng instruction ko anong klaseng protein ang i-create, si RNA po ang tutulong doon. Kung baga, kung ang DNA ay double-stranded, RNA molecules are single nucleotide strands. The RNA bases are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Uracil replace T found in DNA. And its sugar is ribose instead of deoxyribose. There are three major varieties class of uh, RNA. Okay? So we have the messenger, the transfer, and ribosomal RNA. And each has its specific role to play in carrying out DNA's instruction for building proteins. So messenger RNA or mRNA carries the information for building the protein from the DNA to the ribosomes, the protein synthesizing sites. So later on sa chapter 3, mapapag-aralan pa natin yan. Transfer RNA naman ferries amino acids to the ribosomes. And ribosomal RNA forms part of the ribosome where it oversees the translation of the message and the binding together of amino acids to form proteins. So basically, class yan, tatlong yan, ang tumutulong para makapag-create ng protein. Okay? So we describe protein synthesis nga in chapter 3. So those are the major types of nucleic acid. So once again, DNA double strand, RNA single strand, DNA deoxyribose, RNA sugar ribose, DNA base pairing, uh, ATGC, RNA base pairing, may base pairing din siya, pero AUGC. Okay? DNA genetic information, RNA protein synthesis. Okay? So to end class, Chemistry is very essential in understanding the body functions, okay? Though molecules and atoms are non-living matter, still we humans are dependent to it.
because it sustains us and helps us to achieve homeostasis, which is one of the major goals of the body. So once again, we discuss the concept of matter and energy, different types of molecules and compounds, specifically the inorganic and organic compounds. Thank you so much, class. I hope you learned a lot today. See you soon on the next video. So bye-bye, class. And please make sure to answer the feedback form after browsing this lesson. Bye, class.